Hi, I'm Kristen Arnett, and I am here with Krisha Boynes. That's how you pronounce it, right? You have a, a fake H in your name. Like, it does. it's not actually in the spelling. The Krisha. No, my name is Polish for Christina, and so it has a Y in it. I mean, it's like a crazy spell. Very unique name <laughs> for a very unique co-founder of Vapor Beauty. And she's one of our icons for the green beauty icon box that I'm partnering with with Alia Beauty. So that's a lot of beauty in one sentence. I just said it's like beauty, beauty, beauty. <laughs> but you're such a beautiful woman, and I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, it's fun to be here, Kristen. <laughs> it's nice to talk to you. The last time we talked, we were eating chia pudding. Yes, chia seed pudding. It was your first. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was I, my first chia seed pudding, so it was like a special seed. event because I'm a big fan. <laughs> I chia seed pudding divergent you. Yes, you did. <laughs> Not many people can say that. Serious business. I'll take that honor. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, I want to dive into some questions about you and the brand because you were one of the very first actually natural and organic focused makeup brands on the market. How many years ago did you start now? It's been about eight years. Wow. It's about eight years ago. Yes. 2010. We uh, nine actually. Oh my God. Is it been that long? It's <laughs> <laughs> just becoming launched, a blur. Yeah. Yeah. We launched in 2009. So yeah. And how long were you working on the line prior to launching it? Not that long, probably two years, but we had been designing and manufacturing for other brands forever. And so we had a lot of product development knowledge to draw from. And uh, we, what we were really inspired by and what made us do Vapor was the fact that there wasn't any organic color in at all in the space that performed the way that Christine and I wanted it to. I mean, we wanted rich depth of color and uh, beautiful packaging and great performance. And that didn't really exist back then. Yeah, I would agree with that. When you yeah. came out, it was like, oh, this is sexy and natural? <laughs> right, and it works? What's going on here? What's hmm. the catch? <laughs> you had been manufacturing cosmetics for other companies for how many years prior to starting your own line? Um, since 2000. Wow. Okay. So your yeah. history in this is pretty long running. Mm -hmm. um, and it's you and Christina as your co-founder, right? Yes, she is. Yeah. Christine Cahilly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And um, yeah, so we were designing and manufacturing product for a lot of other brands that sold in the natural space before we did Vapor. And what we saw was there was a lot of really great skincare. Um, we were making some of it and lots of other people were making it too, but there wasn't any color. And that was really the thing was like, it was missing from the space and it felt like such an opportunity for us. And Christine is a painter. So she's got a really amazing grasp on how to take a limited palette of mineral pigments and turn them into um, really a lot of beautiful shades with depth and breadth of color. Yes, we're featuring the Aura multi-use stick because it does have depth and range of color. The idea with this product is that you could stick this one thing in your pocket or in your bag and really do a whole face. And you can put it on your lips, cheeks, and eyes. Mm -hmm. um, it's safe to use everywhere on the face, of course. And it gives a beautiful pop of color to those areas. And um, in the box is Cortison, the shade Cortison, which is our superstar number one most popular shade. So It's iconic in all the ways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the thing about Vapor that gives me the most joy and satisfaction is the fact that I love to come to work every day. Mm. I am excited to wake up in the morning and get my butt over here and see what's next. <laughs> and that could be anything that could be. I mean, one of the things I love is when we get emails from customers who tell us that the makeup has, has changed their life. And I know that sounds really dramatic for foundation mm -hmm. or lipstick or blush, but there have been, I remember one particular um, email from somebody who was a burn victim and they had a very unusual texture of skin as a result of that. Yes. And for whatever reason, vapor makeup made them feel like they had normal skin and made them feel beautiful again. Mm. And when we read those things, I mean, literally, it brings tears to my eyes. And there's dozens and dozens and dozens of those over the year, over the years. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> 
So I love to just wake up and see what's next. Yeah. I love that. Oh, that's so good. Did you know what? I've been using vapor for so long that I forgot what conventional makeup smells like and tastes like. And just recently, <laughs> some brought something into the office from a conventional brand, and we all put it on, just like, okay, reminder, this is what the rest of the world is doing. Oh, my goodness. That stuff tastes terrible. No, tastes were, like you mean on your lips, or were you actually, like, licking foundation? Because I'll do that no, sometimes. No, I was putting on some <laughs> conventional lipstick, and it has this, like, really artificial vanilla cake taste to it. What's mm -hmm. going on with that? Who came up with that? Oh, I don't know, but I'll tell you this. When I was younger, I was really obsessed with all those Bonnie Bell lip smackers. Oh, yes, yes. And I think that that's just the more sophisticated adult version of the little girl who wanted to play with makeup. And then, but still want something sweet and delicious, you know? Yeah, but how about fruity, yummy, juice-flavored instead of artificial vanilla cake? How about that? Um, because artificial vanilla cake is a guilty pleasure, and fruit is a boring, nutritious snack. Oh, my gosh. That's the problem. I never know. You're welcome. <laughs> that happens when you live in the bubble of Taos, New Mexico. <laughs> <sighs> you know, we could talk about... How makeup can truly change someone's entire confidence in how they approach the world, how they feel about themselves. That is the business I deal in, as far as it, I'm concerned. And no, so I'm glad to hear that your brand is about that as opposed to let's just make more stuff to put on a face. No, it's like people start wearing vapor, and the thing that we hear consistently over the years is, I started wearing vapor and I'm getting compliments. People are asking me if I went on vacation, have I done some sort of rejuvenation? Am I, why am I so well rested? Did I just fall in love? Like what's going on? Wow. And they're like, I am wearing this new product that's really good for my skin. And that's, that feels really good. And wow, them, that's so cool. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just doesn't get better than that, you know? Absolutely. Giving people self-confidence, giving making people feel good about themselves, that's real. Hmm, absolutely. Yes. Okay. This is why you're an icon. <laughs> oh, that's a hard, that's a large shoe to wear. <laughs> well, okay. But here's the thing. You started over 10 years ago. You were probably one of the very first brands to care truly about ingredients, plus color, plus texture, plus mm -hmm. elegant packaging that a woman is attracted to and can pull out of her purse and feel that it's a part of her beauty ritual. Yeah. So for me, back then, when all the cool publications and all the cool chicks were not interested in natural, you still came out the gate and said, this is what we stand for, and that's what makes you an icon. Well, all right, we'll take that. All right. <laughs> Own it. <laughs> yeah. I it's love true. how humble everybody yeah. is. We're definitely, we definitely always are cutting edge and we're always coming out of th out with things ahead of the pack. And that's kind of interesting sometimes because the consumer isn't ready for it. People don't know what it is. And when you're the first um, out with something, sometimes it sits around and people don't understand what it is because people need direction. Yeah. People need people like you to tell them this is cool. I think I can honestly say that it is the cleanest makeup out there. It's 70% organic ingredients. It's beautiful, natural pigments, um, nourishing ingredients. Um, some other brands use FDNC pigments in some shades because it's difficult to formulate certain shades. Um, some people use stabilizers and binders. People use water. When you use water, you have to use more aggressive preservatives. There's a million different ways that it can diverge from purity and um and we are all we're purists and so i think our products are the are the most pure and you have an herbal enlightenment complex and we have the herbal enlightenment complex <laughs> i'm hesitating to tell you the secret because it won't be a secret anymore if i tell you so i'll sit with that for a moment okay we'll come back to that oh you're such a tease <laughs> Is it a secret for something you're going to do, or is it a secret, like, grandma's secret recipe sauce thing? It's a secret about the Herbal Enlightenment Complex. <sighs> <laughs> I, 
went to this restaurant once in Boulder where they served you drinks that had been infused with sounds of monks laughing and babies giggling. Oh my god. Is it like that? Um, it's kind of along those lines. I'm going to tell you the secret. <gasps> You're going to tell me the secret. I'm getting in really close so I can hear you. <laughs> and you're like backing up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. So the secret about the herbal enlightenment complex, it's, I'm, um, it's, what it is, is I think what this speaks to is the intentionality that we put into our products. And so we selected these herbs, not only because they're good for the skin, um, but also because they're sacred in three world, major world religions, Lotus in Buddhism, mm -hmm. um, Tulsi in the Hindu tradition, and frankincense. It's kind of like our little world peace formula. So there's a little bit of that intention put into the product. Now, why would you keep that a secret? We should shout this from the rooftops. Because, you know, not everybody's into that. Oh, not everybody's into world peace? <laughs> Isn't that what every, you know, Miss America wannabe stands up as, I, world peace. I have some herbal enlightenment complex on my face right now as a demonstration. <laughs> that's where you need to get into is the pageant community. Industry, that's it, pageant. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so there it is. Never been told on video, just to you. You're special. And thousands of other people now. <laughs> That's really cool. Now, that's out the bag. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, it's you. about intentionality. That's important to us. Well, We're such geeks. That doesn't make geeks. you geeks. That geeks. makes you my people, man. I think right now it is the time to be up-leveling our conversation about the things that matter to us and our consciousness yes. and yes. how we contribute to change. Because it's like everyone's like, oh, be the change. Okay, be the change. Where the change? Where the change? Oh my God! I love this, and I didn't mean God in a in a you know in a any kind of sort of way. In a, in a uh, way, I meant gosh, goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goddess. Oh my. Oh my goddess. The, we can keep going. This. We're very. Um, we get an okay. Eight What's something that you like to do or something you enjoy that would surprise people about you? <laughs> Let me think about that. Or you have um, some interesting piercings and tattoos we should totally see, like Sarah from Osmia showed us her tattoo. I don't have any tattoos. Huh. That's unusual. In this Neither do I. High five. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Something that's really odd. I love dish towels. I collect antique dish towels from Europe. <laughs> they are usually made out of mangle cloth, which is the cloth that you would put between your clothes and the iron in an old fashioned iron in a manor house. And they are usually made out of hemp or linen and they're gorgeous. And I love them. Do you have any there? I don't have any here. <laughs> they're in my kitchen. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty dorky. Yeah. I want to see one of these because I love old antique linens. Yeah. Well, they're very plain. They're very humble. Um, I mean, think about it. They're used in the ironing process, so they're not even to display or for anybody to see. Um, but they're just like this. Just I think it's because they're really old hemp and old linen that they have this beautiful, delicious quality to them. And they're fabrics that have actually been worn and had a job and been used and loved. I'm just totally into them. Where, do, where where does one get these things? Well, who's your supplier of the um, Well, if one isn't going to flea markets in Europe, one might shop on eBay. Ah. <laughs> or one might take Kristen on a work trip to flea markets in Europe. That's what I was thinking. And we film our adventures. Dish towel extravaganza in Paris. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll be emailing you about the details. Indeed. <laughs> Pretty nerdy. I love it. That is nerdy. That's a fact no one knows, except for people who come to my kitchen. And now thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any extra ones? You know where to send them. Everything's all good. 
Just, just you wait. All we need is a mailing address. Uh, next question. Are you a dog or cat lover or do you go both ways? I think I'm technically a dog lover. But I do have a cat also, and I've always had a dog and a cat, and I also have a flock of chickens hmm. and a rooster named Bob. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me so happy. Bob is pretty awesome. Yeah? He wants to peck my eyes out, and he hates my red pajama pants. Other than that, he's totally cool. <laughs> I'm going to edit it so people don't know that you're talking about a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Bob? And why does he hate Krishna so much? <laughs> and what's with the pants? <laughs> it's like a bull or something. Like the color red gets him all aggravated. Yeah. It's the color of passion. Yeah. So if you wear your red pajama pants out to the chicken coop in the morning, bad things happen. Okay. Good to know. Yes. What are three words that would describe your personal superpowers? Mm. I know. It's the juicy question. My personal superpowers. Um, this isn't going to necessarily make sense, but I am invisible. And what that means is the ability to observe. And as you said that, you just made like a huge noise. Okay. And what <laughs> no, I just, I just thought it was ironic because you're like, I am, I'm like an invisible I'm ninja stealth. just floating. You, you don't know I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I haven't quite mastered it yet. <laughs> but what I wish my super fat power was, was by location because that would come in so handy. No more airplanes. Just boom, you're right there for the event, you do it, you leave, you're home, you're in your bathtub. So you are a secret Trekkie. <laughs> Beam me up. <laughs> yeah, we're working on that one. Okay. It hasn't happened yet. And three? What's three? Um, third, well, that was a desired superpower. That's so okay, we'll let you have that. Um, third superpower, I have a rose garden. And that's not a superpower, that's a hobby. <laughs> Have you forgotten the question? <laughs> Serious superpowers. Um, the power of gentleness. How about that? And gentleness, gentleness gives you a lot of leverage. Yeah. It's an underexplored superpower. Think like about it. it. Meditate upon that, all ye people. <laughs> I think you should cut this part out. Why? <laughs> this is ridiculous. I know, and that's why I like it. It's pretty ridiculous, but I don't really know what my superpowers are. Beside invisibility, that's really a serious one. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though uh, we established that you are also loud while being invisible. <laughs> There's a reason you got to where you are in your business. There's a reason you've been successful. Well, Okay, so superpowers that are like real um, have to do with being super creative and never really seeing anything, any obstacle as unsurmountable or never really accepting anything as a failure. Everything is a learning experience. Um, everything's an opportunity to learn. Every obstacle is an opportunity to turn something into something more powerful and more useful and more, just better. So I think it's that attitude. That's Actually, I want to revise this to my superpower. My third superpower is positive attitude. There it is. Hopefully this, cool. um, you know, just gives people a really beautiful sense of your personality and that there's a human who's kind of wacky behind the brand. Which there's is a huge goofball behind the brand. <laughs> Are you taking your lipstick off? No, I have like too much product on. Fresh application. I don't know. I just needed to do that. <laughs> Is this an obsession? Like That's a different conversation. We should end here. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Kristen, so much. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. This has been an enlightening, like an herbal enlightenment complex enlightening interview with you. Newsflash. 
you got the you got the headline story. <laughs> take good care, sweetie. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.